Here's what to do when you open Quantum Incursions for the first time and realize that you have no idea what to do. The first step is to completely forget about the map. Just go straight to your settlement and get building. However, something's different about all the buildings here. Residential buildings give population and quantum coins, as you might expect, but also give a bonus to your quantum actions regenerating every hour. We'll talk more about actions in a bit. Production buildings require population and produce quantum supplies, but you'll notice that both production buildings and residentials only produce their resources in 10-hour increments. Cultural buildings give euphoria, basically happiness, and this boosts the coin and supply production of your residential and production buildings. You want to make sure that you're keeping high euphoria as it can massively reduce or increase productions between 20 and 150%. You can use your coins or supplies to produce goods or units, however, you can only choose two of each of these buildings, and can see which ones other members in your guild have chosen. Try to balance out your guild's stock of goods and units when you choose. Unlike in your main city, both of these building types produce units or goods instantly, so do not, I repeat, do not, have more than one of each unique goods or military building. It's just a waste of space. And lastly, decorations are the most different building of all. These require Euphoria to build, but provide attack boosts for your units in this feature. Before you can do anything meaningful to help your guild, you need to build a strong settlement. Start by only building residential production and cultural buildings. I've found this layout to be useful, and basically our goal is to focus on coins and supplies. As you can place better buildings, do so, again trying to balance out the coins and supplies. Once you have some villas and goat farms, then you can place down your military buildings and goods buildings. I'm not going to be covering a step-by-step -step guide for this, so I recommend checking out Flata Karata's guide for your settlement, which is linked in the description. It lays out how to change out buildings in your settlement after each collection, and includes layout screenshots for each step. As per which goods and military buildings to choose, I recommend Iron and Ballisti. Make the other choice one that balances with the guild. The iron will come in handy for getting some expansions, and it's the smallest goods building. The Ballisti are the best unit in the Iron Age, so they should let you do a few more fights without losing too many units. Until you get your goods and military buildings up, you can use the resources you start with, 10 of each good and 8 of each unit except for 4 Ballisti, to do some cheap donations or fights. However, once you get your goods and military buildings down, you want to really start pushing your progress. Avoid losing units whenever possible, but try to use all of your quantum actions up. These regenerate by 5,000 every hour and cap out at 100,000. To complete actions, you'll need to head over to the quantum map. The quantum map is what you open the feature into every time you click that entrance portal. The first thing you'll notice is probably the layout of nodes on the map. Nodes are sort of like provinces in guild battlegrounds, where everyone in your guild can work on them at the same time. Once you complete a node, you can move on to the next, and on until you reach the boss. Beat them, and you can move on to the next difficulty where you get better rewards for each action and in your end of season boxes. There are quite a few different nodes that you'll come across, but generally red means fighting with attack boosts, blue means fighting with defense boosts, and yellow means donations. For our fighting nodes, red or blue nodes with swords represents fighting normal enemies. Red or blue nodes with this little guy on them means the enemies will have slightly higher boosts. Red or blue nodes with strongholds on them have stronger enemies, but these nodes boost the boss, so defeating them makes the boss easier to defeat. Red or blue nodes with this gray icon are garrisons. They have stronger enemies, but they'll give you stronger attack boosts when fighting against the boss if you clear them. And of course, the boss itself is where the strongest enemy boosts are, and comes in both blue raspberry and cherry flavors. For the donation nodes, a goods icon means you must donate goods. Coins and supplies means you must donate those resources, and the units means you must donate units. You'll also come across a garrison for donations, and these also are just donating units, but will provide you stronger boosts against the boss. You'll see an orange flag where everyone in the guild starts, and a green flag if your guildmates have already cleared a node. If you come to an orange node, a quantum officer can choose which path to follow, and unlike the other times the path branches without the orange node, 
you cannot go back and complete the other path later. These splits are marked with a dotted path instead of solid. Every time you move to a new node on the map or complete an action on the node you are currently at, you will have to spend some of your action points. For every action you take on your current node though, you also have a 40% chance to get a reward from some items chosen from a pool. As you play harder difficulties, the rewards become better and better. You'll notice that there are specific resources or units that are called out as giving double progress towards the node. Whenever possible, you want to use these goods, resources, or units to complete that node. You even get double the rewards. In most cases, the biggest bottleneck becomes quantum actions, so getting double progress for every action is extremely important. Your guild's ranking in the incursion is based on how much progress your guild generates. Therefore, your goal is to get through as many nodes as you can by working together with your guild. Note that the higher the difficulty, the better the rewards. Your progress counts for more than just your ranking, though. Instead, it also gives you progress towards the Quantum Pass, which gives some bonus rewards like more shards, quantum medals, and kits for the various buildings that we get from the feature. Note that if you buy the pass, it will last for the entire 12-week championship, not just the current season that you're in. Progress also counts towards the free chests at the end of each season. If you complete 40 actions, you get one free chest, and completing 160 actions gets you two free chests. Think of these kind of like the chests at the end of the St. Patrick's Day event. The remainder can be opened using your quantum shards. Quantum shards are the premium currency of this feature, sort of like temporary diamonds. Your shards balance is shared between all incursions, only resetting at the end of each championship. That means that you'll want to spread out your spending of shards, whether via the end of incursion boxes, expansions for your settlement, or just buying some more quantum actions. Just make sure that you use them all up by the end of the championship so that you don't lose them. There really isn't too much to say about strategy with this feature. For your settlement, it's all about starting slow and getting the more efficient buildings built before placing your goods in military buildings. If you don't build up your settlement first, you'll find yourself running out of coins and supplies pretty early on. On the map, you'll want to always be manually fighting to avoid losing units. In case it's been a while since you've done so, remember to use terrain and unit bonuses to your advantage. Focus on killing one unit at a time instead of just damaging all the enemy units. To help in those battles, also make sure you play your cultural settlements. While the update hasn't come out yet, the main settlement buildings will soon be providing attack boosts to your units in incursions. In the meantime, your tourney grounds and forgotten temple from the guild battle rounds and guild expeditions, respectively, will also be able to help out a bit in that respect. Additionally, you're unable to see the exact details of nodes you haven't reached yet, so communication here will be key. Shout in your guild chats which goods or units have the doubled progress, so that your guild members with those specific resources can participate on those nodes. As you work together with your guild to progress through the maps, you'll also be competing with other guilds. Your guild's ranking is based on the sum of the progress all guild members complete over the course of an entire championship. Six seasons long, just like the Guild Battle Realms championships. At the end of the championship, you and your guild will receive rewards based on your placement, with the top rewards being very good indeed. The next bit is for guild leadership. You can give members the Quantum Officer role to give them some permissions in the incursions. This role lets members start the incursion for all guild members, move the guild to the next level once the boss on the previous level is complete, and also mark nodes on the map. Note that this role gives members with it no permissions to do anything regarding guild goods. In fact, this feature needs no guild goods at all. I recommend giving this role to at least one member who can be online at 8am on Thursdays to start the incursion, as if they don't, your entire guild will be unable to participate until an officer starts it. Also, there is currently no way to view stats at the end of the season to see how much progress guild members have completed so it might be a bit tricky to figure out which members are completing any minimums or requirements you've set. For everyone though, I encourage you to try out the feature. It's not auto battle, and it's an entirely different style of gameplay from the other cooperative features we've got in this game. The rewards are well worth it, and it doesn't take much time at all each day. 
If you got any more in-depth questions on the feature, I encourage you to ask me over on my Discord server, which is linked in the description. I hope this video helped explain the feature a bit, and as always, I'll see you all next time.